Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. Today in Dave's Garage, I'm going to show you two applications that I use for restoring, enhancing, correcting old family photos and actually making something out of nothing in some cases because one of the programs, Gigapixel AI, can actually add information to a photograph where that information did not exist before. It's hard to explain, but it's easier to show you. So let's drop right to the desktop and I'll show you how. By the way, both of these apps, I'm just going to start with them already installed, but I'll put the links on how to do that in the video description so you don't have to sit here and watch me install the apps. Let's get to it. Okay, we'll start with Gigapixel AI, the main program that I'll be using to enhance the resolution and facial features in the photos. I'll start with it open, but nothing loaded, so it's a completely blank session with no history, no setup, no context, same as you would have it if you just installed and then started the program. First thing I'm going to do then is to drag a photo into it. And we'll zoom in, we'll see this is a reasonably blurry old photo. And we'll see what it can do with it. Now I can drag the slider back and forth and see the processed version and the original. And if I want to zoom in, actually if I leave this on this side, when I click, it goes back to original. So I can zoom in on my mother and my grandmother and see that, uh, yeah, it looks reasonably realistic. Now, I did not know my grandmother or my mother at those ages, of course, but they look pretty good. I think it's trying to fake glasses or remove glasses from my grandmother. I think she had glasses and it's not rendering them. So what if I do more facial recovery strength? No, I think it does actually turn out a little better, but it's still not rendering glasses. So again, I can drag the slider back and forth. And the difference here may not be really obvious if you're on a very small screen like your phone because the resolution is so dense that you can't see the horrible blurriness and JPEG artifacting that's present in the original here. But it's largely gone in the processed version. So what the heck are they doing? I'm guessing their AI is trained to find and identify faces in the photos and perhaps how they do it, I have no idea, but they're reconstructing the faces by adding in existing known features that they've seen in many other photos like the eyes and maybe the nose and the mouth and eyebrows and it does mustaches and hair, it does quite a bit. They have a separate app that you can use for just general resolution enhancement, but I'm not using that here. I'm just using their Gigapixel AI for the facial features. A little backstory on this photo. My understanding is that this is taken probably 1940 uh, four, and this is after all the men in the family have gone off to war, the sisters got together on one farm in Saskatchewan and they ran the farm for the years that everybody else was gone. They also had a bunch of babies to raise, apparently, one of which is my mother, and these are her various cousins. Now, I'm going to close this file without saving it, because I'm just experimenting at this point. And I'm going to drag in a new photo, which is my mom and grandmother and uh, my mom's cousin sitting in a high chair. Babies. Again, probably same era in 1945, I would guess. Sorry to date my mom there. No, I think it's done a pretty clever job with this one. Um, and in fact, it's hard for me to know uh, on my grandmother, who I did not know at that age, of course, not that I knew my mother at this age either, if I think I already said that. But uh, the better you know a person, I think the more wrong it's going to look because it's going to deviate from the person's features as you know them. And people are really attuned to facial features and any changes and differences. So if it's somebody you don't know, but it looks realistic, you can probably get away with it. In this case, it looks like my grandmother, so that's all I can tell you. Now, what if the photo is really bad? Like, uh, my old business card from 1983 when I was a Commodore Technical Support Wizard. Now, this is a, what do they even call that? The old newspaper effect when they were sending pictures over the wire and it was kind of a, I'm gonna, I can't believe I'm space in the name of it. Not newsprint, I mean, what's the actual process of sending photos by dots over telewire? Let me know in the comments. I'll have remembered it by then, but uh, let me know anyway. So this is what the photo looks like originally. Let's see, if it, uh, let's see what kind of success it has with it. We don't need a super zoom here, but... debatable how much of an improvement this one is because there's just not a lot of information for it to go on but you can see it cleans up the eyes and the eyebrows a bit if we dial this up it'll probably look worse and better at the same time 100% let's see what it comes up with 
Yeah, not the best photo, but hey, you put your photos of yourself in the 80s on the internet and see how you feel. Looks like I'm ready to play some hockey with that hairdo, though. And finally, let's try my old card key because it's a blurry mess. I'm afraid of what it's going to do with my mouth because you can only kind of see two teeth because of my mustache here, so I'm afraid it's going to buck toothify me. But we'll see. Well, here's the thing. It doesn't look a lot like me. I mean, it probably does through the eyes a bit. But I'm me. I know what I look like. You know, I stare at myself in the mirror and I edit myself in glorious 4K all week, so... Disturbing. Maybe I'll turn down the facial recovery strength a bit on this one and see what it does. Yeah, see, I think that's actually better because it's not reconstructing so much from whole cloth. I mean, that's probably close to what I look like on that day, so... Here's an example of one that I think it did not handle well because it was one of the ones I tested up front to see how it did when I was just experimenting with it last weekend. And uh, I'll show you why that is. You see my grandmother, you can see the reflection and glare coming off of her glasses here, and I can see the rims. So I'm pretty confident that she's wearing glasses. And I don't know that it, it actually does it with glasses. We'll see. Yeah, see, it removes her glasses, and then her eyes look all weird. By the way, this is my mother, my grandmother, my great-grandmother, and my great-great-grandmother, all in one photo. Of course, it's the only one I have of four generations, and I'm very lucky to have that one, so... I mean, I can zoom way in on great grandma here and see what she looks like. Now, I'm afraid it's adding stubble. And I'm pretty sure great grandma did not have a hormone issue. So let's turn the whole face recovery here a bit and see if we can get rid of the. No, nah, she's still got like a bit of a three o'clock shadow here. That's pretty weird. Like, maybe it's going based on the angularity of the face, but... Yeah, see, it didn't really look much like Grandma. Uh, this is my grandfather, and he was born in 1915, so... Handsome fellow, you can see. From Sweden. Actually, he was the first of the siblings, I believe, or one of the first, anyway, to have been born in Saskatchewan as the family emigrated from Sweden to Saskatchewan. So his older brothers and parents, of course, and all that were born in uh, Sweden. Are we done processing yet? Yes, we are. There we go. This one, I'm, I think it does a great job on, actually. You can dial up the face recovery strength. It defaults to 90, so I should put it on 90 and see what it looks like. Now, if you zoom way in, you can see it's... It's not got a lot of information to go on here, uh, but let's see what it does with this eye. Like, that's impressive to me, that you can zoom into this level of detail, and what you're really having started with is this. It's doing not a bad job, given what it's starting with. So I assume what it's doing here is it's detecting the presence of the eye feature, and either the AI or program itself is manually going in and saying, well, here's all the eyes that I've ever seen. Here's the one that probably looks the most like that if it's derezzed, and let's just swap it in there and replace it. And maybe it starts with like a million photos of eyes from old photos that are high enough resolution to use as the original to replace. All right, so assuming we're happy with this photo, all we have to do is say file, is it save as? I'll save it as PNG just for fun. I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to rename it. Grandpa High Res. Now the next app we're going to want to use is Photoshop. We're taking a sweet time to load here. What's going on? Windows Workspace Reset Essentials. That's weird. I don't know why it does that. But if you happen to ever lose your UI while you're in Photoshop, it's go to Window, Workspace, and then whichever one you're using, and then say Reset It. It's probably a hotkey that I inadvertently pushed that destroys all the UI and removes all the toolbars and leaves me with nothing. But fortunately, I figured that much out. All right, so we're going to take Grandpa High Res and we're going to drag it into Photoshop now. A couple things I do want to just touch up here. There's some photo damage here, so I'm going to 
There's like a healing brush. I am not a Photoshop wizard, but I know this much. See, look at that. Magic. Is it the magic eraser? No, I'm using spot healing brush. Let's just make quick work of this. Oh, there's some fuzz on the photo, it looks like. Goodbye, fuzz. So you can see it's done a pretty good, I think that's actually probably a little scar, so we'll leave that alone. Pretty high res. Now one thing, I don't know how obvious it is in the video, but you can see it does a lot of blurring here, or softening, or smoothing, and it does not continue that out into the rest of the photo, which is sort of a good and a bad thing. Um, I actually prefer it this way, so you get the original texture with the detail in the face. Uh, it's kind of a weird look, and I'm not trying to hide the fact that I've enhanced the photo, so that would give it away if you were trying to hide it, but... The next thing we want to do is colorize the photo, and we'll use the neural filters in Photoshop. You have to download them, I believe, when you first use them, but they are, as far as I know, free to use. Filter. Neural filters. Uh, most filters only need to be downloaded once before you're able to use them. You can view and control the download in progress. Once downloaded, you can toggle them on or off to preview the effects of each filter. There you go. He's a little intense. We'll see what we can do for the adjustments here. I'm going to turn the saturation down a bit. Too much. Better. No, I don't like that. Now I have to fix some of the... Does that work? Mm, yes. Yes, it does. So what I did there was I went and picked that area that it had turned skin color and then said, Just make it gray. And it seemed to do that pretty well. Should we able to do that here too? Actually, move that one a bit. See if I can get it to go without. And if I alt drag, make a copy of it there, so then I can fix the part where his hair was getting colorized. So I'm just adding basically light gray markers where it is inadvertently colorized his shirt or other areas as pink. So yes, we are satisfied. Sure. And I'm going to say, okay, so now I'll put this to a new layer because that's the option I've selected. And my original photo will be underneath, but it's still a high-res one, of course. Now, my mother claims that he had very green eyes, so we're going to try to zoom way in and select his eye. And while holding shift, we select his other eye. That adds the selection together. And if I'm lucky, I should have two eyes selected. And I kind of do. It looks real spooky with the marquees on there, but let's see. I'm going to go to adjustments, hue saturation. Dial up the saturation a bit. Nope. And we want to colorize. And then we want to find green. Just on the edge of believability here. There. We'll go six. Now, what if I can bring the other one as the original as a layer here? And I've got the resolution enhanced. And then the colorized. I actually use their photography plan myself because I think it includes Photoshop and Lightroom and some of the basics for pretty cheap. Check the video description. I'll put the link in there. That Hey, if I can find an affiliate link, I'll also do that. There you go. Pretty cool results that you can probably duplicate with free trials by going to the Gigapixel website, and I'll put a link in the video description. And I'm not sure, but I think there might be a free trial of Photoshop, and if there is not, then I recommend their photography plan, which is probably the cheapest way to get Photoshop, and you get Lightroom and some other stuff too. So take a look at that if you need a way to get Photoshop. Thanks for joining me out here in the shop today. If along the way you found today's episode to be any combination of entertaining or informative, I'd be honored if you consider leaving a like and subscribing to my channel. If you have any interest in matters related to autism, Asperger's, or ASD, please check out my book on Amazon, Secrets of the Autistic Millionaire. It's got nothing to do with money and everything to do with living a successful life on the spectrum. It's everything I know now that I wish I'd known back then. Remember, I'm mostly in this for the subs and likes, so please be sure to leave me one of each before you go today. In the meantime and in between time, I hope to see you next time, right here in Dave's Garage.
Do it, Lynn. Do it, do it.